Welcome to another midweek machining video. In this video, we're going to be making a tool. This is a cap to the bottom of a float bowl. Instead of having a screw in type that you've seen me use before to check a service fuel level, and I'll try to find a clip to shove in here if you don't know what I mean by that, and also link a video in the description of me doing that. But the service fuel level, if you're unfamiliar with it, is tapping off the bottom of the float with fuel applied to the carb and running a plastic hose, a clear plastic hose around the side. And so you get a real time accurate um, measurement of where the fuel is because, you know, the laws of fluid dynamics are going to make sure that those two are equal. So if the fluid level is, uh, let's say, you know, a couple mil down below the top, it's going to be a couple mil down below the top on this side as well from the inside to the out. Well, with this kind of a bung, if you will, on the bottom of these float bowls, I don't have this tool. Now, you can buy these. Z1 Enterprises, among others, have these. That screw right in, have some sort of a sealing O-ring, and uh, then you tap into it with a plastic hose that I'm assuming comes with it, and then you can read the fuel level once you bring it up along the side. But I got a lathe, so I'm going to make one. And I thought it would be interesting content. So here is the objective. We're going to go ahead and turn this down to the major diameter of this outside. Maybe just slightly bigger. Because we do have some room in here, it's just a big open flat. Not a whole lot because you have the drain which still has a piece of hose on it. That's the, I'm sorry, you have the overflow rather. That's not a drain. This is the drain. This is the overflow. In case the, the carbs over fuel will come out there and won't go in the motor. A very nice addition. And... So we'll make it probably a little bit bigger than that. And then we're going to turn it down for the major size of the thread diameter, which is an M18. Uh, no, this is not my Starrett 120. This is a Starrett 3202-8. It's a full 8 inches long, which is pretty long, I guess. So if I, might, if I measure this thing up with uh, the calipers, I get uh, 698 or so, 698, yeah. So just around 700 thou which I believe is an M18 size. It's like 17.7 something something millimeter when you do the actual mathematical calculation. Well, I don't do it, the Google does, but um, I think it's an M18. The thread pitch is measured at 1.0. I used a thread pitch gauge for that. And of course, the barking starts. Something's got him amped up. So we measure this at 1.0. That's definitely 1.0 thread pitch. We'll leave that out because we're going to need it when we do a scratch pass. But yeah, so anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do is load some material up. Uh, for this, I have some, what is this, uh, inch and a quarter? I think this is inch and a quarter. Yeah, this inch and a quarter aluminum, 6160 something. I don't know, just general purpose aluminum. Nothing fancy. Seems pretty good. I got to run slow right now from a previous operation. Man, I don't know what the hell he's barking at, but he, something's got him fired up. Well, it's going to have to be what it is. I'll try to edit him out a little bit. He's being a real pain in the butt today. All right, I put a new cutter in. It's got an aluminum um, aluminum insert in, a new, a new tool holder, rather. So I'm going to make sure that this is pretty squared up with the piece using our handy dandy scale method. Maybe a skosh more. See the way this works is if it's high on the radius it'll kick it that way. If it's low on the radius it'll kick it back the other. So you can get a really good representation of where your tool is to the center of the work just by doing this. We'll know when we face it. Uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up putting a hole in the middle of it, of course, from this end. We're going to thread from this way in. And that way we have room to put a, a fitting on the end of it. That's where the hose is going to be. Now I'm going to make this quite a bit longer. Maybe yay long. Uh, let's see, probably uh, I, I'd say the whole thing might be 30 mil long because I'm going to knurl part of this so we can just grab it and turn it. You don't need a wrench. We don't need to mill a hex into this. And then I'm going to um, 
uh, you know, put the fitting in where it intersects with whatever hole we put in here so the fuel can get to it. That's the plan at least. Let's go ahead and face it off. Uh, let's see, I'll go back to a thousand RPM, I guess. I got my feeds way too slow. I forgot I was doing a finish cut on different project or something. Let's, let's speed these up. I think we're a little low still, but it did take the little tit off, so we're just a little low now. All right, that's going to be good enough for that. Okay, so now it's faced off. It's more of a, well, it's a necessity because we need to square that off, but we're going to go ahead and measure the major diameter of this plug now. Remember, I'm working in Imperial, but I might switch them back and forth to metric on certain things. So this is 1.072. So we'll go to 1.100 most likely. And this is 1.250. So if we're going to 1.100 and this is 1.250, 150, that's <laughs> 250 minus 100, 150. And we'll go yay far up, doesn't really matter how far up we go because we're just gonna part it off the length anyway. I gotta hit the right, uh, lev uh, right. what do you call it, dial. And I start to feed the thing in, doesn't matter though. But um, anyway, should be, uh, I don't know, about 15 thou away. This is not critical, but. Okay, 10, I lied to you. Close enough, but we'll take it anyway. Good enough for government work. Yep, yeah, right out of money. So we're at uh, 1.100 right now. Close enough. So that's pretty good. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this uh, this length where the thread's going to be down actually pretty generous. Uh, and there's a reason for that, which we'll cover. But um, let me remeasure that. Yeah, what was that? Uh, six, almost 700. We're just going to shoot for 700 and... Can always take the last couple of thou in, but uh, 700 thou. So we're, we know we're at 1.100. Uh, so we need 400 thou off of this. Up to a certain point, we'll just make a square, a shoulder rather. So probably, I'm going to say like 30 mil, because that leaves us another 30 on this end for that knob or something. And we're going to need some room. Maybe 25 is probably good enough. Yeah, let's do 25. So I'm going to back off and go in 25 and then we'll just make a witness mark. Come up to that point. And I think that's going to be pretty good. That was 300, supposedly. Yeah, because we got exactly 98 thou to go, so close enough. Right now it's at 798. Let's make sure, I already brought it in at 10 thou, but let's see where we're at now. 40 thou more, so, yep. 10, 20, there's 30. Ten more. Actually, about 12 for that. So I'm going to slow the feed down. 
get a better finish. Pretty much right at 701. Let's just take a couple thou more and we'll get it right to where the other one is. All right, so what we got now is a nice shoulder to cry on. And uh, might dress that up a little bit more. It isn't quite right. And then uh, we can, we're at, we should be at the right size for that major diameter of that thread, which we are, 798. Uh, yeah, 698, that's what I meant. All right, I'm going to fix that off camera. We'll come back and uh, get ready to do some threading, I guess. And unfortunately, I got the fan on again. I, I tell you what, folks, we just can't get a break from this heat. It's just, it's been better in the mornings, some mornings, but today is particularly bad, so... I have the change gear set for a 1.0 thread pitch, but I haven't changed the gearbox yet because I'm going to use the threading tool, which I have squared in with a dial indicator just to break this edge, probably this one too a little bit, as a chamfer tool. I'm going to give it a pretty decent, well, let's take a look at the other one, see how much of a chamfer they got on the end of it. Nah, they don't have much. We're just going to put a little chamfer on it. Uh, so I'm going to keep it at 1000 RPM, then we're going to scale it way back for doing this threading operation. That's going to be good enough. Um, now the gearbox settings, I'll show you what I mean here. We want a 1.0 thread pitch and I've already got the gears changed for it. You don't have to do a lot of gear changes on this lathe except for metric threading. And then for 1.0 we want position 5 and uh, number 5 rather and uh, looks like B. So we want B here and number 5 down here which I'll go ahead and set. So B5. Sounds like a uh, game of Battleship. B4, hit, J1, miss. So we're on B5, changes the threading on the, um, for the gearbox. Now where the lead screw is turning instead of the um, drive shaft for the, for the carriage. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna show you how we're gonna do this. And this is a idea that I picked up from two sources. Uh, one is um, Max Grant on YouTube, Max Grant Swan Valley Machine Shop in Down Under, and uh, A-Bomb 79 Adam Booth just did a video on this too. And, they were, and coincidentally, they were both machining the same part. They were machining threads in a wood laid spindle for somebody. So that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. So uh, I'm pretty sure I have that right. Yes. So the direction of the lead screw turning is fine. I'm gonna turn my speed down to 360. I'm gonna see, I might even have to go slower, I don't know. Well, I'll explain why here in a second. So we want two and B instead of two and C, all right? I'm gonna go to 270. That's better. Now I'm gonna put some blue on it, which is just a marker. So we gotta do a scratch pass. Now the way we're gonna do this is, here's, here's the deal. On a lathe like this, uh, that's, has, this has an imperial lead screw. And so we're gonna be metric threading. Now in the Grizzly manual, it tells you Grizzly. when you're threading in metric, you cannot disengage the leads, the, uh, uh, the half nut um, for the lead screw, because if you do, you're gonna lose your place. Really what they say is you leave the lead screw half nut engaged and reverse the lathe. That way you don't lose your place. And you won't pick up the threads again. But it's kind of difficult when you're working up against the shoulder because you do have a certain amount of spin down. So if you want to come up pretty close, which we really want to do, uh, we want to get up there pretty close. Um, well, we don't have to get up there super, super close, I don't think, but I think we're going to be able to have to get up there pretty close, pretty damn close. So what we're going to do is 
um, we are going to um, disengage the lead screw. And I'm going to put an indicator, my indicator down here at the last possible moment to do that. And then we're going to disengage. Now it says not to do that. But then we're going to back off the cross slide, probably one full turn, setting on zero here and then working in from there. I'm not going to use the compound to advance in for the thread. And then we're going to reverse the lathe here, <laughs> that guy. And when the mark comes back around, we're going to re-engage. So it'll be as if you never disengaged in the first place. So we'll pick number one. Right now it's not uh, hooked up because it ain't up against the thing, but now it is, the lead screw. So we're gonna, probably going to use number one, and these never line up exactly right. The mark, when it comes up on one, is when you hit it, and it's usually a little bit off to the side. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to try to get this threaded. This is kind of a tricky threading operation. I really haven't done a whole lot of this. But um, we're going to see if we can do it. And as long as we can disengage the lead screw without crashing the, the tool, um, I think we'll be okay. Because we're not going to be able to get as close as I think I would like to get on this. But let's just see how close we can get. We can get all the way up to there. Now what I can do is I can come in and cut a thread relief on the inside of that with a different tool. So any remaining uh, aluminum that isn't threaded is not going to bind us up and it will seat. Because we're going to be cutting a O-ring groove in this anyway. Put an O-ring in just like the original had, you see, or has. O-ring groove, all right? I may have to grind a tool for that, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go right about there and set a zero on the carriage dial indicator and we're going to use that as our positive stop it's not going to be i don't think it'll be moving all that fast at this rpm so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and touch off and then i'm going to back the tool away up the part off the part and we'll go in just a little bit we need to do a scratch pass and then make sure that the uh the pitch is correct with the thread gauge all right so i guess that's time to do it do it. Like two thou, two and a half thou maybe. And again, I'm gonna probably use number one, so I'm gonna let number one come back around. Let me back up here a little bit and test that. See how it kicks in. All right, let's see what we got. Now we didn't let that one come back around. That's the important thing here, all right? So now I'm gonna go in reverse and let that one come back around to the exact same spot. We'll leave it engaged. Yeah, it looks like 1.0 thread pitch to me. All right, now it's just a matter of coming back in and uh, rinse and repeat. I can actually go a little bit closer maybe on the next cut, but you know, it's kind of not for the faint of heart when you're going up against that. The other way to do it is to turn this tool upside down and thread the other way, but I kind of wanted to try it this side, this way first. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. Since we're already engaged, we should be good. Damn it, I missed it. And <laughs> I just did it. Well, I screwed that one up. Looks like we're trying it again. 
<laughs> what I'm having trouble with is getting the lead screw in and out. It's I haven't used it. I think it's just really stiff just from maybe it's excited, I don't know, but it is stiff nonetheless. So I'm gonna work on this off camera a little bit in and out and make sure I can get it right. Right, see, you know, it doesn't go in exactly on a mark. And I noticed this on everybody else's videos too, like A-Bomb and Max Grants. They kind of know where it is. I'm just not familiar with this enough, so I put a little mark there. If I hit the lead screw when I'm coming up on that little blue mark next to one, then I'm going in reliably. So that, that's the problem. And that's, that's what scrapped the other one. Plus, I forgot to back the tool out when I reversed and I chipped one end here, so we're just gonna make another scratch pass. I'm gonna run it, I'm running it at 360 instead of the 270. It seems to wanna go in and out of the lead screw a little bit easier, but you know, I've been noticing there's parts of this lathe that just start to work better and better as I go. I think when they build them, they build them with everything pretty tight, you know, tightened, tightened up. So once you run it for a while, you're supposed to do an oil change. I already did the oil change because I assumed there was some hours on it. But uh, anyway, let's try it again. I'm gonna touch off. And I'm gonna zero my um, cross slide here. Go like four thou on a scratch pass. Let it come back around to one my mark. And I kind of wussied out on that. I'm about 25 thou off, so we're going to have to get a little bit more confidence and let that go in just a little bit more. Meanwhile, let's check it. That does look a lot better, and this speed's a lot better, too. All right, I'm, I'm going to have to get some confidence. I'm going to uh, this time. I'm going to watch the indicator. I'm going to let that indicator come up as close to zero as possible. If we crash it, we crash it. Looks pretty good though. Bring it back up to zero. I'm going to add a couple of thou. Four, four, right there. Okay, let's see what happens. Boy, it comes up on that quick. I think I did hit it a little bit. Wow. That does come up on that quick. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to bump it forward again with using the inching. Oh, just touched it, damn it. I just touched that damn face, damn it. But that's okay, we'll clean it up. I'm going to try some anchor lube a little later. Right now I want to be able to see this thing. Let's give it a four, a four or five more thou. Here goes nothing. We'll see it out again. I got to get in there closer, but because there's just not a lot of not a lot of thread in there in that bowl to give me, uh, you know, for thread relief. So I got to get it a little closer than that. But it's looking a lot better than the last one was. I like that speed too. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna whittle this down off camera so I don't get distracted and then um, come back when I get a really close, if I even get it close. Third time's a charm. I actually <clears throat> had this work on the last shot, sort of. It threads in fine, but I went too deep. It's I don't have the I don't have a machinery handbook, 
and I have no way to measure these threads. I don't have any thread wires or anything, so I'm just kind of going off of how it looks. And I thought I was getting close to the depth. Turns out I was a little bit too deep, so I'm going to take it easy. I know how far I went on the dial. So what we're going to do is we are going to try to take less. See if we can get this right. See if it works. <clears throat> Hard remembering all this stuff. All right, like I said, third try is a charm. Snuck up on this, and uh, she goes on nice. I think there's uh, the thread on the inside of that uh, float bowl is a little rolled over because it doesn't seem like it's 100% developed, like they may have run a tap into it not quite all the way but I mean it doesn't over tighten at that point I can get this thing in no problem and uh, there's no problem with the threads they look fine yeah so uh, we got this part of it done now what I'm going to do is off camera is just clean up the outside here and uh, now I do got to do a relief so I can get this thing to seat all the way um, it's going to go inside the flow bowl a little bit because, you know, we just don't have a lot of thread here to accommodate for relief. So we'll have it go into the flow bowl a couple mil maybe. And uh, that, it doesn't matter because the flow bowl is going to be filled up with fuel higher than that, much higher than that. So, but th this is working out so far. But, you know, it's the first time I ever thread like this. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage the uh, lead screw and... I gotta speed it up and polish this out a little bit with some sandpaper and stuff and knock the sharp edges off the thread. We'll go ahead and get the threading tool out of the way. And then like I said, we'll set up to do that um, relief in there. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna use for. I think I might just use a um, uh, like a, the, the parting blade and just relieve that with the parting blade. All right, what I did was just part it off. It's kind of guesstimated length, I don't know. It doesn't matter as long as it goes in enough. I did do a thread relief with uh, that part, not a parting tool, but that grooving tool. Put a chamfer here. I just cleaned up those threads on the end. Well, if you guys are gonna go away to charge your battery for an hour, you're gonna miss stuff. So here's where we're at. First thing I did was, after I finished the thread here, you saw that it screwed on well, is I went and knurled this end calculated out about where I wanted it and uh, parted it off, spun it around and I uh, turned a, um, actually kind of, that would be a facing operation, a groove in it. Luckily I had a tool for it, um, an old high speed steel, which is right here. And it's even got the radii, or radius rather, ground on one side. It only has it on one side because it's designed to be sit sitting in this fashion here so around the outside corner it's got clearance it's got relief like it just took a good P you know relief I just calculated out where that needs to be it's very simple actually all I did was measure up the uh, oh, outside dimension oh yeah the outside dimension of this groove in the cap so the major diameter of the o-ring subtracted it from the major diameter of this divided by two came up to be 75 thou in from this end. The tool's 75 thou wide, so it's pretty easy. You just go in 75, then another 75. The tool needed to be a little wider, so I backed it out a little bit after I test fit it. You can see here that the O-ring goes in there pretty smartly, and uh, it's protruding up just about the way it's supposed to. So let's try it out on the float bowl. Here's Mr. Float Bowl. I'm pretty sure they're all the same. Yeah, they are all exactly the same. As opposed to like a um, pumper carb. You know, it's got a number two's all different where the drain is. Of course, they don't have these caps. 
It seats up there nice and uh, it goes in just a little bit, that's fine. And I can feel that O-ring crushing. So since we know this is turned parallel, the face is flat in other words, relative to the threads, it's, uh, it's 90 degrees to it at least. Um, then it should seal off just fine. Now I'm debating whether to put the tap on the bottom of it and swing the tube up or on the side of it and kind of angle it down. The problem I have with this is um, where's this going to sit in relationship to this or where's it going to point? In other words, when it's tight. Now I'm thinking the relationship between that and the, uh, and the face is what's important. The thread shouldn't matter because this is going to bottom where it bottoms no matter what. So I think I'm going to try on all four carbs and I'm going to make sure that this thing, I'm going to make a mark where I think I should put it. And then uh, if it lines up basically on all four carbs when I tighten it up, which I think it will, I'm just going to put it in the mill and shoot an angle in and ream a hole and put some sort of a uh, nipple on it so I can hook a hose to it. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I think the safe play is to go in only from the bottom and just leave it sticking out down below. I have this little piece of brass came out of my carb junk stash. It's got the little uh, extruded um, bulge on it. I wish my bulge would extrude. And that will be fine for a hose, you know, a little piece of uh, tubing, clear tubing, and then, you know, just press it in. Make sure it's a good press fit, okay? The, the problem is I can't guarantee where this is gonna be on other carbs. I could test it on these four, but there's no, guarantee that they machine that flat relative to whatever I'm making this relative to on the carbs that I have the same. So the safe play is to shove this in from the bottom. Um, the main jet penetrates in here somewhat, which is why I'm really glad I went that deep with it. So I'm just going to push it in yay far. I don't know, something like that. I don't really know how, the neural, how deep the neural is compared to the depth of that hole, but I think it's going to be fine. And then there's plenty of room underneath these when it's in my rack anyway to uh, put a hose in. And worst case scenario, the hose has to be a little longer than what I have worked with in the other ones I have, and big deal, right? And and then uh, I think it'll be. I think it's a safe place, so that's what I'm going to do. So I need to get a measurement on this. And that's the downside of not making one of these, because if I was going to make one of these, um, I'd be able to fit it to whatever I have as far as reamers. I don't have a lot of reamers. I really need to get more. This guy is uh, 196. So that's probably, what, uh, 5 mil or something? See, 175, 85, 95, 96. So 75 mark plus 20 plus 1. So we got 196, 75, 85, yeah. This is the 188.5, 188 and a half. Now, the difference between 188 and 195 is pretty small. So what I can do is just chuck it up and turn this to the size I need. And then we'll press it in. We'll just turn the end of it. So I'm not making one, but I'll modify this one to work with this reamer right there. And the nice thing about doing it on the bottom is I don't got to use the mill. The only reason I was going to use the mill is if I was going to shove it in from the side, even at an angle. So I'm not going to do that now, so we don't got to mess up the mill. We can just basically gently chuck this. I'll pick a drill that's, uh, I don't know, a certain amount, 5 thou or so, 6 thou smaller than that reamer. Drill and ream it. Uh, and then... Um, We'll, uh, I'm going to have to do that first because I'm not really sure what the hole is going to turn out to be. Sometimes these cut a little bit bigger. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to end up taking this out. And that's like a no-no. What we can do is we can mark the part and mark a jaw. I mean, it's kind of unscientific, but if we mark a jaw and we mark the part, we can generally get it back in where it's going to run pretty much the same. It's close enough. It's not going to the moon. It's not going to NASA. So we're just gonna do that. Let me set up what I need and we'll punch it. We'll punch it, baby. I'm chucked in, of course. I'm not very tight, but well, that's a matter to be discussed at a later time. But I wanted to make sure the tooth of the jaws is not on that edge to roll it over. So I'm well inside there. I don't really care about the surface finish on this. <clears throat> I mean, you know, not being entered in any contest or anything. 
But um, so what I'm just gonna do is, you know, the normal stuff, center drill, drill and ream. Beauty. Now this guy here shouldn't fit. If it does, then we're screwed. Nope, doesn't fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna whittle this down. I think I may have a small bore gauge I can go in here and check it with, and I'll probably do that. Mic that up, we'll make this like, it doesn't have to be a terribly good crush, but we'll probably do a 2000s crush on it. And uh, most likely just stick it in with the tailstock. Because we can put this end in the chuck just loosely, you know, where this little, little bulge is. And just shove it in. That way I can really control how deep it is. Alright, we're ready. I'm just going to chamfer this hole. I love these Noga tools. I don't know how I lived without these things. I mean, they are badass. They make things so easy. Right. Now, there ain't no Loctite needed or anything like that. We're just going to shove it in. I think it's going to go okay. We'll put it in the uh, drill chuck kind of loosely. Hold on loosely, but we don't want it to let go. Yes, we'll put a little bit of, uh, I don't know, WD-40 is fine. Just a little lube on it. This should push in pretty good. And that's it. Now I didn't really measure that. I should have because of course the air compressor turns on. That's better, but I'll show you up close here in a second. Well that's perfect. What I didn't want it to do is stick through the hole into the other bigger hole there. So it's almost right up to it. That's pretty good. So um, yeah, this is pretty good. Let's make sure it holds the seal. Oh yeah, it was a pretty good press fit, you know, not like, not a big time crush like I did on those other parts, but uh, I can't remember what the hell it was now. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it yet. If this video comes out first, the other parts I did a press fit on you haven't seen, but I think that will come out before this, so don't worry about it. So let me clean this all up, we'll take a final look at it. Alright, so here's the finished part, nice and cleaned up. Fairly complicated part for what it's used for, but I think it's going to work pretty well. And I could have bought one, I don't know how much, but I believe I can make this shit. So that hole in there fits the main jet so it's not going to interfere with it when you put it up into the float bowl and this thing bolted in place. And once we set the fuel levels, or I should say screwed in place, um, we can just take this out and you just drain it right through the hose, not a big deal. And then um, you uh, have to drain the other carb because remember we're only energizing two carbs at a time and it has two fuel inlets. So it's a little easier to do this on these carbs than a four banger because all four of them get uh, uh, injected with fuel through the common fuel rail if you will, that common connector. And um, yeah, so this, uh, this is going to work out just fine. I don't, know, I don't know what these cost, they probably are dirt cheap. but. Probably made in China, and I would trust my work better than something made in China. And so this will be fine because it'll be hanging on the bottom of the car. We'll take a clear tube, or reasonably clear tube we can see into, and we'll put it up alongside the carb and make sure we measure the service fuel levels on each carb. Well, yeah, I'm liking it. All right, folks, figured I'd show you the tool in action. My other tool has no action, so I guess this would be the only one to show you. So I had to make one design change to it. I had to shorten the thread length up because as I in indicated in the video, and of course it's more you know, uh, typical to this one, I should say, same. Uh, the threads are not fully developed up in here. There's a burr at the end of it or something where it goes inside the float bowl. And so when I tried to put it all the way in on one of these, I forgot which one, um, it just wouldn't thread in and I felt it binding up. So I'm like, well, I know what that is. So again, I just cut this down by about three mil, cleaned it up, and uh, she's, she's working fine. Now, I've already done all four carbs. I'm just going to redo number one to show you how this works. But um, I find it's easier to screw it in without the, uh, uh, without the hose on the bottom of it once I get my starter thread going here, which is right there. And you just gently ease her on in. 
<clears throat> we put the hose on, the plastic tube. So let me just go ahead and fire this carb up with some fuel. You'll see it start to go and we got a bunch of air bubbles and we're gonna have to work these air bubbles out. So usually if you do this, you can kind of get that air bubble to go back up inside there and not be a part of the equation anymore. And just let this settle out and we'll see where this thing rides. So this one is sitting about where I want it to be sitting, which is right at that edge of that feature of the carb. Um, the, I, it's kind of hard to describe, it's part of the carb body, but it's what the service manual describes as the mark to use as a reference. And I'll point to it here where the Mortsky screwdriver is this spot right here, this little edge. See it goes across and it's just about there. It's plus or minus one mil. So it's about three mil from where this edge of the carb meets the float bowl, okay? And so that's this is a good reading. Like I said, I've already done all four. Um, all four carbs required multiple adjustments, which is usually the case. Uh, number four required, th required three adjustments. The other required two. One, two, and three required two adjustments. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm not, that's not atypical. And so, yeah, so we're fine with this. So I just wanted to show you how the thing worked and uh, that it does work. Um, I think I would make a couple of more design changes if I made another one, like putting a smaller hole in so it doesn't, you know, flow out like it's a freaking fire hose. Otherwise, it works just fine. So I just wanted to show you how it works and that's the service fuel level check using the new tool that we just made. All right, that's it on this uh, midweek machining video. I initially intended these uh, to be short, kind of quick machining jobs, but this is definitely not quick and short. Well, it would have been if I knew what I was doing. So somebody that's done threading like this before, they would have had this knocked out in fucking half an hour. I don't know where the other ones are. This is the third one I should say. I went through two others to get to this point <clears throat> because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> This lathe is new to me and I've never even threaded one thing on it, let alone something fairly complicated which goes up against a shoulder. That's probably the most challenging single point you're gonna do is up against a shoulder, especially when you don't have a lot of length. Now granted, I left it long so I'd have a little bit more wiggle room in there as, as the tool approached, you know, ground zero as far as crashing. But, um, you know, w once I figured out what I was doing wrong, and th this this thing is tight. I mean, it's better now, but I've never used it for threading, so the gearbox is starting to loosen up now. Uh, it was the same way for a regular feed. So once I got some machining done, it's going in and out of feed, at least on the carriage, real easy. Cross slide, I barely use the power feed, so that's still a little sticky. But now I've figured out the um, nuances of the uh, half nut when it comes to threading. And uh, so that actually worked out pretty well. But I had to sneak up on it because I don't have any way. I don't know what the thread depth's supposed to be. I really need, I said this before, I need to get a machinist, uh, machinery handbook and be able to look up the thread depth on these threads. That way I can just dial it in on the dial and I know I'm going to get close. But I haven't pulled a trigger on one. They're pretty expensive. So if anybody's got one and want to sell, let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. I learned a lot. That's why I film these videos because I learned probably more than you guys are learning considering you're probably only watching two minutes of it anyway. But uh, I was here the whole time so I learned quite a bit during that time frame. Um, I'm still recovering from this COVID bullshit so um, I, I'm hoping we'll get some regular videos out here pretty soon. This one's going to come out I'm sure well after another period of time has gone by where I may, may actually have another, you know, full video, if you will, on, on a job come out, but I'm not 100% sure. So it is what it is. As always, don't just repair, destroy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.